Well, let's see whether the finance minister can shed a bit more light and bridge that gap between how we feel and how he sees the economy. He's about to deliver the mid-year review. Analysis follows right after this. of the Public Financial Management Act 2016, Act 921. I stand before this August House to present a media fiscal policy review of the 2018 budget. Uh, Mr. Speaker, yesterday was Mandela's 100th birthday. And the President of the Republic gave a sterling speech and it will be, it will be befitting to remind us of his words. We must recognize that the world is hungry for action, not words. Let us act with courage and vision. And the Holy Book also says, the Lord did not give us a spirit of timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Mr. Speaker, it is also fitting to remember Honorable G.H. Mensha, a stalwart in the economic transformation of our country. We have not seen a more exemplary finance minister in the life of this republic. May his soul rest in peace. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, let us also remember our former Vice President. Order. Let us also, with decorum, remember our former Vice President, who also was at the Ministry of Finance. May his soul indeed also rest in peace. Mr. Speaker, have to speak with one language if we are to execute this transformation that we all seek. For indeed, in Genesis it says, behold, they are one people and they have all one language and now nothing will be beholden from them which they purpose. 
and this is where we see Ghana. One language, one people, nothing will be beholden from us that we possess. Mr. P Speaker, permit me also to convey our sincere appreciation once again to this August House on behalf of His Excellency, President Nana Adudankwa Akufuad. For the continued cooperation and support of honorable members in the management of the economy. Since the new patriotic party assumed office in January 2017, it is our fervent wish that this cordial relationship between the executive and parliament continues to promote the attainment of our collective development aspirations and goals. Mr. Speaker. This presentation is an abridged version of the 2018 Mid-Year Fiscal Policy Review, and I'd like to request the Hansa Department to capture the full text of the Mid-Year Policy Review of the 2018 Budget Statement Economic Policy. Mr. Speaker, on 15th November 2017, I came to this August House and presented a report on our continued efforts <laughs> to resolve the many economic challenges we face and our strategies to improve the socio-economic conditions of our people as part of the 2018 budget statement. As you may recall, in April 2015, the NDC government had sought and received approval to bring in the IMF to redeem them from the economic distress they had put the country into. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, in October 2016, after one year and a half under the program, this was the IMF assessment of their performance. Economic outlook remains difficult, and fiscal challenges are mounting. The growth outlook for 2016 and 2017 has weakened. Revenues are underperforming, and the deteriorated financial situation of some SOEs in the energy sector is posing fiscal risks. The authorities will cut spending to offset revenue shortfalls and have taken steps to address the financial situation of SOEs, including with new levies on petroleum products. Domestic revenues are underperforming, reflecting lower than expected projected oil prices, weak economic activity of lower business profits and personal incomes, as well as lower than expected revenue impact from several measures implemented so far. It therefore should come as no surprise to you that shortly thereafter, in January 27, the MPP government inherited an economy in distress. With a debt overhang which had exceeded 73% of our GDP, GDP growth which had declined to 3.7% of GDP, the lowest in 23 years, a fiscal deficit which had risen to 9.3% of GDP, and a monetary policy rate of 22.5%, which had led to a crowding out of the private sector, making it difficult for entrepreneurs and businesses to grow and expand to create jobs that IMF program had essentially derailed, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the government managed to bring the program back on track, and after one year of managing the economy, the same IMF had this to say in April 2018, and I quote, implementation of the ECF supported program has significantly improved in 2017. <laughs> Growth has rebounded, the fiscal deficit has declined, leading to a primary surplus for the first time in 15 years. The external position has strengthened, generating a buildup of external buffers, and key steps have been taken to address fragilities in the financial sector. Reforms should continue to entrench these hard-won gains. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to report 
that by the end of 2017, in less than one year, our collective effort have put the economy back on track, evidenced by the following indicators. Reduce the fiscal deficit from 9.3% at the end of 2017 to 5.9%. Reduce inflation from 15.4% as at the end of 2016 to 11.8%. Reduce gross public debt to GDP ratio from 73.1% as at the end of 2016 of 69.8%. Grew GDP from 3.7% as at the end of 2016 to 8.5%. And reduced interest rates, 91 day treasury bills, from 16.4% as at the end of 2016 to 13.3%. In addition, Mr. Speaker, we managed to pay off 6 billion CDs of outstanding claims that we inherited. On the socio-economic front, the Akufuadu government has eased the burden of hundreds of thousands of Ghanaians and invested in the future of our children and our country. We implemented the free SHS program that has provided over 90,000 additional teenagers an opportunity to assess high school education, and improve the future prospects. This major flagship program has saved parents a minimum of 3,000 and 1,950 per student per academic year for boarding students and day students respectively. We increased the school feeding program from 1.6 million children to 2.1 million children and also increased the amount spent on each child by 25%. We added more than 150,000 households to the LEAP program, thereby improving their livelihoods. We have and continue to provide over 49,000 teacher trainees and 51,000 nursing trainees with 480 Ghana cities every month, without which most of them would have dropped out. We have supported over, we have supported over 200,000 farmers with fertilizers and seeds to help increase production and improve their incomes and create employment. We have been more diligent with payment of city refunds, unlike under the previous government, when it could be in arrears for three quarters or more. We have given tax relief of over 800 million to businesses and households through the abolishment of nuisance taxes. And electricity tariffs have been reduced by 17.5 to 30% for the various customer classes, leaving to savings of approximately 1.8 billion per year for businesses and households. In addition, we continue to make significant investments and renegotiate power purchasing agreements to avoid defaulting on unconscionable financial transactions in the energy sector inherited from the NDC, and also to ensure that we do not go back to the dark days of Gimso. Mr. Speaker, after seven years of agitation by public sector workers demanding that their pension funds be transferred to their schemes to be managed, we transferred the total amount of 3.0173 million being the value of funds in the Temporary Pension Fund account, TPFA, and restored workers' pension funds to the five public sector pension schemes something that the previous regime had been unable to do for seven years. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, that is how we have prudently utilized the very limited resources that we have had these last 18 months to stabilize the economy, invest in our people, and ease their heavy burden, which translates into real money in the pockets of fellow Ghanaians. As I indicated in the budget statement last year, it is always rewarding when you hear from numerous beneficiaries of these programs as they recount how these interventions 
have changed their lives. I have heard many more in the past 18 months, but also some difficulties facing our small indigenous contractors. We are as such taking steps to clear the rest of the outstanding validated claims on the government. Mr. Speaker, as a country, we continue to face many challenges that we must address. These include low domestic revenue mobilization, illicit financial flows, impact of recent oil price increases, the high and increasing wage to tax revenue ratio, currency volatility, relatively high debt burden and the related interest expense, and the sticky bank lending rates. Mr. Speaker, in spite of these domestic and international headwinds, we have competently managed the economy and put in place structures to build a robust and resilient economy for sustainable growth. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, provisional first quarter GDP estimates indicate that the real GDP grew by 6.8% for the first quarter of 2018 compared to 6.7% for the same period in 2017. The non-oil GDP grew by 5.4% up from 4% during the same period in 2017. The fiscal performance for January to May 2018 shows that both revenue and expenditures were below their respective targets, but the shortfall in revenues, 1.4 billion, was much greater than the shortfall in expenditures, 797 million, leading to a fiscal deficit of 2.6% of GDP compared to a target of 2.4%. Headline inflation, Mr. Speaker, declined to 10% in June 2018 from 11.8% in December 2017, driven by moderation in both food and non-food inflation and in response to exchange rate stability, fiscal consolidation, and prudent monetary policy, among others. The trade account, Mr. Speaker, recorded a surplus of 1.35 billion compared with a surplus of 1.27 billion over the same period in 2017. Gross international reserves were 7.8 billion, 4.2 months of imports by end of 2018, May 2018, compared to 8.1 billion, 4.6 months of import in the, in the end of May 2017. Mr. Speaker, despite the strong fundamentals, we have seen the CD come under pressure primarily due to external pressures. In fact, aside, Mr. Speaker, in fact, Mr. Speaker, aside from the short transitory volatilities recorded in June this year, the average performance of the dollar has been one of the best in recent years. Mr. Speaker, the performance of the Ghana city during the 18 months of the Akufuato government has been impressive. If compared with the last six years, these are the facts. The year-on-year -year depreciation of the Ghana city against the US dollar stood at 4.9% in 2017. It was 9.7% in 2016. It was 15.7% in 2015. It was 31.3% in 2014. And 17.5% in 2015. A further interrogation, Mr. Speaker, of the data from Bank of Ghana showed that the depreciation of the first half, six months of 2018, has been the best since 2012. It is instructive to note, Mr. Speaker, that from January 2018 to June 2018, the accumulative depreciation of Ghana City against the dollar was 22.4 percent. That's again 17.2 percent 17 in 2012, 3.3 percent in 2016, and 3.7 percent in 2017. If this is anything to go by, it means that the 2018 Ghana performance of the Ghana city 
is likely, Mr. Speaker, to be better than even the 4.9% we experienced in 2017, which was an all-time low compared to the four years of the Mahama administration. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, based on the physical performance, based on the physical performance of the economy, we have programmed the and we have programmed the underlisted measures to ensure that we meet our fiscal targets of 4.5% of GDP to end the year. Mr. Speaker, last year we abolished numerous taxes. The scale of tax reductions had never been implemented in the 60 years of Ghana's economic history since independence. The evidence shows that the economy has responded positively yeah. to these tax cuts. What is also clear to us, Mr. Speaker, is that we are not collecting as much as we should. The solution to this problem, however, is not necessarily the imposition of many taxes. We must first make sure that we do four things. Ensure compliance with existing tax laws, track the leakages in the assistance system, ensure value for money for the expenditures that government undertakes, and ensure, Mr. Speaker, that the wealthy also pay their fair share. Beyond this, Mr. Speaker, any taxes should be to elicit socially desirable outcomes such as a better environment in this regard. I would like to inform the House, Mr. Speaker, that there will be no increase in VAT. Speculated. I also, I would also like to advise our friends that we should take, we should stop taking directions on economic policy from social media. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, so the measures, so the measures for this year to ensure that we meet our fiscal deficit target of 4.5 percent to ensure that we exit the IMF program. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we are converting the national health insurance of 2.5% to a straight levy of 2.5%. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, we are converting the GEP fund value added tax rate of 2.5% to a straight levy of 2.5%. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker,
Mr. Speaker, VAT will thus be maintained at 12 and a half percent. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, well, they are imposing a luxury, we are imposing a luxury vehicle tax with capacity of three liters and above. Mr. Speaker, we are reviewing personal income tax to include an additional ban of 10,000 CDs and above per month at a rate of 35%. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, we are intensifying the compliance measures to make sure we collect the taxes that are due us. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, as part of efforts to improve revenue performance, we will intensify tax compliance and flood assisting revenue leakages. Investigations we have taken show inbound leakages on goods arriving in the country, significant outstanding tax debts, suspense regimes in the areas of the country, significant outstanding tax debts, Suspense regimes in the area of warehousing, transit trade, and free trade free zones, and tax audit issues such as limited coverage, low auditor productivity, and low audit yields. Mr. Speaker, we are rolling out major initiatives to address these tax compliance issues. Mr. Speaker, these initiatives would include prosecution of tax evaders and corrupt tax officials, a special VAT attack force to ensure enforcement and deep VAT penetration from the current low levels of 11% and institutionalized reforms of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Yes. Mr. Speaker, tax compliance will also be boosted by the implementation of the Common Platform for Communications Traffic Monitoring, which we are all aware of. Yes. Revenue protection, Mr. Speaker, there will be a new revenue protection and assurance unit, mobile money monitoring, and fraud management. The common platform will provide government with an accurate and comprehensive view of telecom revenues in order to verify tax compliance and to ensure, Mr. Speaker, that the comprehensive billing and collection of all telecom-related taxes, levies, and regulatory fees are enforced. Mr. Speaker, in accordance with the PFM Act 2016, Act 921, my presentation on this mid-year fiscal policy review will focus on the following. An overview of recent macroeconomic developments, an analysis of the revenue, expenditure, and financing performance, a presentation of a revised 2018 fiscal outlook, and key highlights of 2018 budget implementation and key policy initiatives. Mr. Speaker, at the time of presenting the 2018 budget to this August House, we provided information on macro fiscal developments for the first nine months of the 2017 fiscal year. Since then, we have updated information through by end 2017. With your permission, I'll proceed to present a summary of the 2017 developments. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, government's overarching fiscal policy objective of consolidating its public finances received a significant boost in 2017. The fiscal deficit target was outperformed, moving the primary balance into a surplus. The cash fiscal deficit was 5.9% at the end of 2017, 0.4 percentage points lower 
than the original forecast of 6.3%. Mr. Speaker, this resulting 5.9% fiscal deficit was financed largely from domestic sources. Domestic financing of the deficit amounted to 12.292 million and constituted about 100.4% of total financing, while foreign financing constituted a net repayment of 47.4 billion. Mr. Speaker, the reduction in the fiscal deficit led to a primary surplus of 1.3 billion against a targeted surplus of 464 billion million a key factor in the decline in growth of the public debt in, in 2017. Mr. Speaker, this is the first time that the debt-to-GDP ratio has declined since 2006 under the NPP government regime. And even with oil revenues as high as they were in 2011. Mr. Speaker, government in 2017 followed through with the implementation of a liability management program to actively manage the public debt portfolio and minimize refinancing risk in line with the approved debt strategy. Leveraging on an improved macroeconomic environment, government issued relatively less costly, longer dated bonds to refinance existing shorter dated and more expensive bonds and the inverted yield curve at that time. Consequently, the turnout of domestic debt was extended to the longer end of an amount of 4.2 billion. Updates on macroeconomic development in 2018. Mr. Speaker, the economy continues to remain robust in spite of observed headwinds, particularly with domestic revenue mobilization and volatilities in the domestic currency market. Mr. Speaker, as of the time of presenting this media fiscal policy review, we have provisional macroeconomic data spanning the period January to May 2018. We will, however, present June 2018 data when it is available. Mr. Speaker, before providing an update on the performance of the economy for the first five months of the year, we first outline the main macroeconomic targets for 2018 to put the presentation, Mr. Speaker, in perspective. The macroeconomic targets for 2018 fiscal year as presented in the 2018 budget are an overall GDP growth rate of 6.8%, a non-oil GDP growth rate of 5.4%, NDI inflation of 8.9%, overall fiscal deficit of 4.5% of GDP, primary balance surplus of 1.6% of GDP, and gross foreign assets to cover at least 3.5 months of imports of goods and services. Mr. Speaker, provisional first quarter GDP estimates released by the Ghana Statistical Services in June 2018 indicate that real GDP grew by 6.8% for the first quarter of 2018 compared to 6.7% recorded for the first quarter of 2017. The ancestral sector grew by 9.6% compared to 11.8% in the same period, and the services sector by 5.2%, higher than the 3.3% recorded in the same period in 2017. Mr. Speaker, in the domestic economy, growth in monetary aggregate slowed during the first four months of 2018. Broad money, including foreign currency deposit, recorded a year-on-year -year growth of 17.5% by the end of April 2018, compared with a growth of 26.6% at the end of April 2017. The slowdown in M2 growth was driven mainly by contraction of 24.4% in net foreign assets, which was moderated by 42.2% increase in net domestic assets. Money and capital markets. Interest rates on the money market for the first five months of 2018 generally trended downwards on year-on-year -year basis. The 91-day declined from 13.69% in May 2017 to 13.53% in May 2018. 
while the 182-day Treasury bill declined from 15.35% in May 2017 to 13.85% in May 2018. The performance of the stock market improved during the first five months of 2018, largely attributed to a decline in rates on the money market instruments and general improvement in macroeconomic conditions. Total market capitalization of the GSE increased by approximately 8.3% from January to May. The disinflationary trend experienced in 2017 continued, Mr. Speaker, during the first five months of the year, largely supported by stability in the foreign exchange market and generally favorable macroeconomic developments. Headline CPI inflation declined from 12.6% in May 2017 to 11.8% in December 2017, and trended further down in the first five months of 2018 to 9.8% in May 2018. The arithmetic, Mr. Speaker, it is plain that inflation is a far more devastating tax than anything that can be enacted by the legislature or the executive. And inflation, Mr. Speaker, is going down. Exchange rate. The Ghana CD remained relatively stable, <laughs> relatively stable, both on the interbank and the forest bureau market, largely due to improved macroeconomic conditions. Mr. Speaker, the interbank market, cumulatively, the CD has appreciated by 0.2% against the US dollar during the first five months. Mr. Speaker, as we mentioned, There has been volatilities in the past six weeks, and as we mentioned, this was mostly due to external circumstances. And also, Mr. Speaker, to speculation when the MTN IPO was initiated. Mr. Speaker, the Bank of Ghana has made appropriate interventions, and we are confident that the CD will be stable through the year. Mr. Sewer, Mr. Speaker, our confidence in this is shown by the provisional trade balance for the period January to May 2018, which recorded, Mr. Speaker, a surplus of 1.354.89 billion, 6.6% higher than the surplus of 1.27 billion recorded during the same period in 2017. The improvement in trade balance was as a result of higher export earnings driven by oil and non-traditional exports which outweighed the value of imports. The value of merchandise export over the first five months of 2018 was provisionally estimated at 6.9 billion, indicating an increase of 10.5% compared to 6.3% compared to 6.3 billion recorded in the same period in 2017. High receipts from oil exports accounted for the improvement in the oil in the export earnings. Thank you. The value of merchandise imports for the period January to May 2018 amounted to 5.6 billion, up by 8.88%, compared to 4.98 billion recorded in 2017. The increase in imports was as a result of an increase in both oil and non-oil imports. The stock of net international reserves, Mr. Speaker, at the end of May 2018, was estimated at 4.6 billion, indicating a buildup of 127 million from a stock position of 4.5 billion at the end of December 2017. The country's gross international reserves increased by 280 million 
to 7.8 billion from a stock position of 7.6 billion at the end of December 2017. This was sufficient, Mr. Speaker, to provide for 4.2 months of import cover. Mr. Speaker, the overarching goal of our macro fiscal policy as set out in the 2018 budget and guided by His Excellency President Akufuado's coordinated program of economic and social development policies 2017 to 2012 is to deepen macroeconomic stability, grow the productive sectors of the economy, create jobs, and ultimately move the economy beyond aid. Mr. Speaker, to achieve our fiscal objectives, the fiscal deficit has been set as a primary anchor and aims to reduce overall fiscal deficit from 5.9% of GDP recorded at the end of 2017 to 4.5% sustain a primary surplus of about 1.6% of GDP, ultimately leading to a decline in the rate of debt accumulation. Continued fiscal consolidation is expected to be achieved through improvement, Mr. Speaker, in domestic revenue mobilization and other stricter spending controls and rationalization. Summary of 2018 fiscal performance, January to May. Mr. Speaker, provisional data for the period indicates that total revenue and grants amounted to 17.4 billion, 7.2% of GDP, against a program target of 18.8 billion, 7.8% of GDP. Despite observed averages in some expenditures, total expenditure, including the clearance of IRS, also fell below its target and amounted to 23.8 billion, 9.8% of GDP, against a target of 24.6 billion, 10.2% of GDP. This resulted in a fiscal deficit on cash basis of 6.4 billion, 2.6% of GDP, against a target of 5.7 billion, 2.4% of GDP. Total realized inflows from petroleum receipts amounted to 2.1 billion, 36.3% higher than the program estimate of 1.5 billion. This includes corporate income tax arrears from oil of about 373.5 million for the period. Mr. Speaker, the shortfall in non-oil tax revenue is mainly as a result of lower than anticipated reported MDA's retention from non tax receipts. It is important, however, to note that the modest inflow from the yield from NDA's IDF capping of about 5.6 million or 7.2% of the program target of the Ghana 77.7 .7 million was realized for that period. Mr. Speaker, total government expenditure, including areas clearance, amounted to 23.8 billion, 9.8% of GDP, and constitutes 38.3% of the annual budget target. Although the outturn was 3.2% lower than the program target of 24.6 billion, moderate slippages were observed in the wage bill, 279.6 million, and goods and services, 134.1 million. Mr. Speaker, following government's fiscal operations, the resulting cash fiscal deficit amounted to 6.37 billion or 2.6% of GDP against a program target of 5.7 billion or 2.4% of GDP. The deficit for the period was financed mainly from inflows from foreign sources, including receipts from the 2018 Eurobond, foreign financing considered about 64.4% of total financing, while domestic financing constituted 35.6%. Mr. Speaker, Due to lower revenues for the period, the primary balance was equivalent to a deficit of 0.4% GDP against a target of zero, surplus of 0.2% of GDP. Mr. Speaker, the gross public debt stock in nominal terms stood at 154 billion as at the end of May 2018, representing 63.8% of GDP 
compared to 66.8% in the same period 2017. Of the total public debt, external debt at NEA 2018 amounted to 81.7 billion, whereas domestic debt amounted to 72.6 billion, representing 53.0% and 47.0% of the total public debt stock, respectively. As a percentage of GDP, external and domestic debt represented 33.8% and 30% respectively. 2018 Eurobond issue. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Finance had approval from the August House on March 26, 2018 to raise up, up to 2.5 billion from the international capital market on behalf of the government to raise funding for budgetary purpose and for liability management. Mr. Speaker, consequently on May 10, 2018, Government raised a 10-year and a 30-year euro bond of $1 billion each from the international capital markets. The 10-year bond was priced at 7.625%, while the 30-year bond was priced at 8.627%. Mr. Speaker, this was the lowest rates the country had experienced in our economic history. Yes. Mr. Speaker, there were a few landmark achievements of this transaction. It was the first time, Mr. Speaker, a B-rated sub-Saharan country has priced a sovereign bond at this level, indicating strong investor confidence. It was the first time Ghana has extended the tenor of its international capital market funding to 30 years and hence extended the yield curve by two times. It is also the largest euro bond ever raised by Ghana and was four times oversubscribed, that's $8 billion. It must also be noted that despite the, the forbearance of, cabinet, of um, Parliament to raise $2.5 billion, we, we accepted only $2 billion of that amount. It might also be noted that despite the size, more than half of the proceeds will be used for liability management, which will not increase the net total debt stock. Mr. Speaker, challenges in the financial services sector. Mr. Speaker, government approved a purchase and assumption transaction in respect of UT and capital banks on August 9, 2017. The PNA involved takeover of total deposit liabilities and some selected assets of the Resolve Banks. The total net liability of the Resolve Banks stood at 2.2 billion as of the end of December 2017. In order not to overburden GCB Bank Limited, the government issued a 10-year fully amortizing domestic bond of effective date of January 1st, 2018, being redeemed in 10 equal installments at a coupon rate of 12%. The bond structure, which ensures regular injection of cash, will improve the financial position of GCB Bank Limited and eliminate any financial strain the PNA may bring along. Mr. Speaker, since the presentation of the 2018 budget statement and economic policy to this August House in November 2017, there have been new developments which necessitates a revision to the fiscal framework and outlook to achieve our fiscal objectives and targets. These developments, Mr. Speaker, include lower than anticipated domestic revenue mobilization for the first five months of the year, issuance of a 2 billion euro bond of 750 million allocated for budget support compared to an original allocation of 1 billion dollars additional program loan of about 915 million 191 US, US million US dollars following the successful completion of the combined fifth and sixth review of the IMF supported extended credit facility program this is in line of program arrangements agreed before the approval of the combined review by the IMF Executive Board. And, Mr. Speaker, additional domestic interest payment 
of 125.5 million resulting from the GCB bond issued by government to GCB Bank on the purchase and assumption of UT Bank and Capital Bank. Consistent with Section 28.2D of Act 921, we present the revived fiscal framework and budget for the rest of the 2018 fiscal year. Mr. Speaker, as already mentioned, the January to May 2018 fiscal performance shows that the total revenue and grants fell short of target by 1.428 million, 0.6% of GDP, whilst total expenditures were below target by 796.5 million Ghana CD, 0.3% of GDP, resulting in a cash fiscal deficit of 6.3 billion, 2.6% of GDP, against a target of 5.7%, 5.7 billion, 2.4% of GDP. Mr. Speaker, we anticipate at, at, at this rate, if remedial actions are not triggered, the resulting end year total revenue and grants would amount to 20.5% of GDP or 2.8% lower than the original budget target of 51 um, billion, 21.1% of GDP. Mr. Speaker, on the other hand, total expenditures, including the change in areas clearance, would amount to 61.45 billion or 25.4% of GDP. 558 million lower than the program target of 62.1 billion dollar CDs. The resulting fiscal deficit would be 11.8 billion Ghana CDs, 4.9 percent of GDP, against a program target of 10.97 billion, 4.5 percent of GDP. This will impact our fiscal consolidation efforts and put our objective of reducing the public debt profile at risk. A net fiscal adjustment of 870 million, 0.4% of GDP, would be required to ensure that we achieve our fiscal deficit target of 4.5% of GDP. Mr. Speaker, therefore, to ensure that the achievement of the 2018 fiscal objectives and targets are not derailed, this media review affords us the opportunity to propose sustainable revenue expenditure measures for the consideration and approval of this August House. These measures mainly include new tax measures which are estimated to yield 1.345 million. This includes an enhancement to tax compliance of about 500 million Ghana cities a downward adjustment in discretionary expenditures also of about 664 million Ghana cities. Mr. Speaker, consequently, the revised fiscal outlook for which budget implementation will be guided by for the remainder of the 2018 fiscal year indicates that total revenue and grants would amount to 50.686 billion or 0.7 percent lower than the original 2018 budget estimate of 51.039 billion. Mr. Speaker, the achievement of this revised revenue amount of 50.7 billion is contingent on approval of our proposed revenue measures by this August House. Mr. Speaker, total expenditures, including area clearance, has also been revised downwards from 62 billion to 61.7 billion. The key revisions to expenditures include 279 million upward adjustment of wages and salaries, 664 million downward adjustment to domestically financed capital expenditure. Mr. Speaker, these revisions in our fiscal operations are prudent and expected to safeguard the fiscal deficit targeted at 4.5% of GDP. Financing of the deficit will comprise a net foreign financing of 4.7 billion Ghana cities and total domestic financing of 6.3 billion Ghana cities. Of the net foreign financing amount, borrowing from foreign sources, including the 2018 euro bond, would amount to 9.97 billion, while amortization will remain as programmed at 5.3 billion Ghana cities. Mr. Speaker, 
The total domestic financing amount of Ghana 6.3 billion includes net dom domestic market operations of 6.7 billion, other domestic financing of 4 billion, and deposit buildup from the petroleum sinking and contingency funds of 2.986 billion Ghana cities. Mr. Speaker, the resulting primary balance on the adjustment in revenue expenditure and financing is a primary surplus equivalent to 1.9% of GDP, higher than the original target of 1.6% of GDP. The government has since 2017 removed taxes that were inimical to production or increased the cost of production. Domestic revenue mobilization reforms are being carried out in the areas of automation of systems, process improvements, and change in culture. In the long run, the various initiatives in these areas will build the systems and institutions for revenue mobilization and improve the trend in Ghana's revenue to GDP. As part of the overall strategy to improve revenue mobilization, a number of measures to enhance compliance were introduced in 2017 and now in 2018. These measures are being revamped and additional revenue measures introduced to ensure that government meets the 2018 targets. Mr. Speaker, as part of efforts to improve revenue performance, we will intensify our tax compliance and plug assisting revenue leakages. Mr. Speaker, compliance will be continued we will have a special VAT attack force to ensure enforcement and deepen VAT penetration from the current low level of 11% of institutional reforms also at GRA. Experts, Mr. Speaker, have been contracted to work alongside GRA staff to conduct forensic audits of companies in priority sectors and undertake audits of multinational enterprises to recharacterize transactions that are a result of transfer pricing activities for the appropriate taxes to be levied. The Ghana Revenue Authority, in conjunction with the relevant state organizations, would embark, Mr. Speaker, on an exercise to prosecute and retrieve all government revenues that have been held in abeyance or evaded due to tax evasion or malfeasance. Mr. Speaker, a campaign commenced in April 2018 to increase the number of tax identification numbers registered persons, encourage the voluntary filing of tax returns, and a general amnesty for taxpayers who voluntarily register, file returns, or pay outstanding IDS. The GRA will intensify education to enable as many taxpayers as possible to take advantage of this window. Mr. Speaker, TIN numbers have increased from 14,000 given in April 2018 to 112,000 given in June 2018, making a total of 1.4 million new TIN registrants. Mr. Speaker, we will be introducing and implementing a new cargo tracking system for all imports, including transit cargoes into Ghana. This is aimed at closing the reported gap between Ghana customs and trade partners. Mr. Speaker, in collaboration with the National Petroleum Authority, we have developed and now using a common platform to report on oil lifting. With this development, it will be possible to detect if the OMCs understate their oil lifting from the depots and tanks. Severe sanctions, including imposition of penalties and prosecution, will be initiated to collect all outstanding taxes. Mr. Speaker, we have outlined a number of these prosecutions to collect over 500 million CDs of taxes that have been evaded. Mr. Speaker, the excise tax stamp policy came into full effect in January 2018 
Some manufacturers complain about the inefficiencies of using manual stamps on high-speed production lines. This issue, Mr. Speaker, has been resolved, paving way for the full enforcement of the policy from August 2018. The GRA has also commenced the use of big data analytics to identify and register additional taxpayers and through that improve filing rates and revenue receipts. The project is also integrating various data sources to identify recalcitrant taxpayers for compliance and enforcement action. Tax policy measures. Mr. Speaker, government proposes to introduce a luxury vehicle levy on vehicles with engine capacities of three liters and above. The levy will be paid on first registration and subsequently at annual renewal. Commercial vehicles will be exempted. Commercial vehicles will be exempted from this policy. High net worth income tax. Ghana currently has five band graduated income tax rate for individuals. Government will introduce an additional band to make the rates more equitable in line with best practice. A 35% tax will be applied of, to incomes over 10,000 Ghana cities per month. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, as a way, Mr. Speaker, as a way to ensure an efficient payroll management system which guarantees cost reduction, quicker payroll processing, data and cost validation, accountability payment validation, and improve overall efficiency, government is currently evaluating options to outsource the payroll processing for its employees. Mr. Speaker, outsourcing government payroll is aimed at addressing the public sector wage bill and its crowding out effect on public expenditure. The overall goal is to achieve the convergence criteria of 35% wage bill to tax revenue in the West Africa Economic and Monetary Union from the current 48%. Mr. Speaker, the internal audit function in the public sector needs to be restructured and strengthened to play its role in the fiscal consolidation efforts of government. The current law and structure of the internal audit agency does not empower it to effectively supervise, manage, and regulate the practices of internal auditing in the public sector. Mr. Speaker, the following measures are being pursued to restructure and re-engineer the practice of internal auditing to enhance public financial management in Ghana. Restructure IAA to function as a department of the Ministry of Finance, and the internal audit department will then be the internal auditor of government. With all internal audit units in MDAs and MMDAs directly under its control and management. This will help, Mr. Speaker, to align the activities of internal auditing to national financial priorities and strategies set by the Finance Ministry. The medium term revenue policy. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry is putting together a medium term revenue policy that will outline revenue reforms targeted at ensuring that there is adequate revenue to fund government programs. The policy is expected to inform revenue measures for the 2019 budget and beyond. Subsequent to the policy, Mr. Speaker, will be the development of a medium term revenue strategy to act as a vehicle for the implementation of the policy. The proposed measures will feed seamlessly into the policy and strategy. Mr. Speaker, updates on key policy initiatives. Mr. Speaker, having gone through the macroeconomic performance the first half year, please permit me to also provide you the update on the flagship projects and programs in the 20. 18 budget.
Mr. Speaker, we crafted our policies and strategies to ensure that we accelerate growth and development at the same time leave no one behind. Thus, we are implementing a myriad of growth enhancing, job creating, and social intervention programs to better the lives of the people of Ghana, as well as to achieve relevant SDGs. Planting for Food and Jobs Program. In the 2018 budget, a total sum of 700 million was allocated for the implementation of the program, out of which 366 million has been released to fund various components of the program. 30 new warehouses were equipped with seed cleaners, dryers, and weighing skills are being constructed in strategic districts in Ashanti, Bunon, Volta, Northern, Upper East, and Upper West regions. Evaluation of BIT is completed for the construction of the warehouses. Additionally, the program received a boost from 216 pickups and 3,000 motorcycles and protective clothing. These were distributed to the district agriculture departments and agriculture extension agents across the country. Mr. Speaker, Infrastructure for Poverty Eradication Program. The main vehicle for delivering the IPEP, the three development authorities, Mr. Speaker, have been established and their governing boards inaugurated. This is great news for the program as the IPEP project would then become more decentralized. For the implementation of the program, commencement certificates amounting to 548 million have so far been issued out of the approved budget of 1.2 billion. This has paved the way for the following projects to be implemented. Construction of a thousand community-based limited mechanized solar-powered water systems, construction, construction of 50,000 metric ton prefabricated warehouses, construction of 570 small dams and daghouse in the three northern regions, one village, one dam, construction of a thousand ten-seater water closet institutional community toilets and mechanized boreholes and solar panels. Mr. Speaker, to date, the Ministry of Trade and Industry has received 781 expressions of interest, out of which 632 have been reviewed and 332 identified for financial support for factories in the districts. In order to attract more private sector investment in support of the 1D1 Web program, Cabinet has approved incentive packages including tax waivers which will be presented to this August House for approval. We have also negotiated with a number of banks who have agreed to match funds for this program. Government, Mr. Speaker, will subsidize these loans to 1D1F um, beneficiaries or our 10% interest rate. In 2018, Mr. Speaker, Exim Bank was expected to provide an amount of 237 million to revamp distress by commercially viable industries. The bank has its best, as Mr. Speaker, the bank has best 5.1 million to pharmaceutical and textile industries. The Universal Bank has also disbursed 2 million to the aluminium industry. Mr. Speaker, free SHS. Government continued with the implementation of free SHS program after takeoff in September 2017. The implementation of the program created opportunity for the enrollment of an additional 90,000 students who would otherwise have dropped out of school. Currently, a total of 362,000 first year students from all public senior high schools are benefiting from the SHS program. This is made up of 117,000 day students and 244,000 boarding students. To date, Mr. Speaker, over 899 million has been released for the 2017-2018 academic year. In addition, sufficient allocation has been made 
in the 2018 budget to cover the first term of 2018 academic year. In order to address the challenges identified with the implementation of the program, 96,413 mono desks, 32,000 dining hall furniture, 3,000 tables and chairs for teachers, 12,953 bunk beds, 4,300 student mattresses, 5,100 computer laboratory chairs have been supplied to various senior high schools. Nation Builders School. The 2018 budget provided 600 million for the implementation of the program, out of which 300 million has been released to take care of the initial costs of the program. Nursing training allowance. In consonance with the policy to reinstate the nursing training allowance, an amount of 311 million was allocated in the 2018 budget to pay the allowances of 68,000 trainee nurses for the 2017-2018 and the first semester of 2018-2019 academic year. As at the end of June 2018, 122.4 million had been released to pay for the allowance of the 51,000 beneficiary trainees. In October 2018, approximately 17,000 new entrants will be admitted as first-year students in the various nursing training institutions. Sufficient allocation has been made in the 2018 budget to accommodate the new entrants. Teacher training allowance. 177 million was allocated for the payment of allowances to 49,000 teacher trainees in the 41 colleges of education across the country, out of which 78.5 million, representing 44%, was released to pay for the teacher training allowance for the second semester. Each trainee received 400 CDs per month for four months. National School Feeding Program. The National School Feeding Program engaged 8,000 new caterers and introduced new caterer contracting guidelines, which require caterers to purchase food items from local food farmers. The program was allocated 423 um, million Ghana cities, of which 222 million, representing 54 percent, has been released. An additional 285 million was released to Clare Arias old caterers from 2015. The LEAP program, a sum of 168 million was allocated for implementation of this program, out of which 78 million representing 46.5% have been released for the first and second quarters of the year. Integrated bauxite and aluminium project. In the 2017 budget, government indicated this commitment to transform the Ghanaian economy through industrialization with a deliberate focus on value addition to the country's vast mineral wealth to create jobs and wealth for the people. In the 2018 budget, a sum of 13.8 million was allocated to support the development of the industry. Work has begun on the review and digitization of available data to facilitate geological resource and reserve assessment of both the Kibi and Yenahini bauxite deposits. The draft bill for the, develop, for the establishment of the Ghana Integrated Bauxite and Aluminium Development Authority to operationalize the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Industry Initiative is currently before Parliamentary Select Committee, and we are counting on the cooperation of this August House to pass it into law. Mr. Speaker. The road sector. Mr. Speaker, works have started on the following projects. Pokwasi Interchange under the Accra Urban Transport Project. Tema Motorway Roundabout. Construction of the Bridge Interchange. Kasua and Nungwa Pass Terminals. As part of the Kumasi paid lift, 17 contracts for West have commenced. Some of them include asphalt overlay in Manchia, Bantama, and on the road from Anoka Junction to Tech Junction. Some of the development projects 
completed over the period include construction of oil and gas enclave roads, construction of two-lane underpass to link Spintex and East Legon. Mr. Speaker, Ghana faces major infrastructure deficits in all areas, including roads, sanitation, hospitals. The deficit, Mr. Speaker, is in the region of at least $30 billion. While the need for a major investment infrastructure has long been recognized, the challenge has been the inadequacy of financial resources to undertake the requisite investment. To bridge this gap, government is proposing a new model of financing Ghana's infrastructure requirements through the leveraging of our natural resources. In this regard, government has reached agreement. In this regard, government has reached agreement with Sino Hydro Group Limited of China for a barter arrangement under which China, Sino Hydro will provide $2 billion of infrastructure of the government's choice in exchange, Mr. Speaker, for Ghana's refined bauxite. Ghana will establish a refinery within the next three years and select its own partner to undertake the refining of the bauxite. Under this arrangement, Mr. Speaker, under this barter arrangement, Mr. Speaker, the $2 billion of infrastructure provided by Sino Hydro will not add to Ghana's debt stock. No revenues or resources will be encumbered as a result of the barter arrangement. The terms of the exchange involve a moratorium period of three years after which Ghana will fulfill its part of the barter agreement over another 12-year period. The moratorium period will give Ghana the time to establish an aluminium refinery. There will be at least 30% local participation in the project. The infrastructure to be provided under this barter arrangement includes roads, bridges, interchanges, hospitals, housing, rural electrification, etc. The first phase, Mr. Speaker, of the project will focus on roads, bridges, and interchanges, and construction will begin subject to parliamentary approval starting September this year, Mr. Speaker. A lot of work has been done in preparation of these projects. The projects would include the following, Mr. Speaker. The first tranche, Mr. Speaker, shall be used. Mr. Speaker, through this financial arrangement, we will, Mr. Speaker, be able to pursue our infrastructure agenda through 2019 and 2020 without increasing our deficit or ruining the economy. The first tranche shall be used to finance the construction and or completion of key roads in all 10 regions. We are confident that this new initiative will be the catalyst for the transformation of our economy and the lives of our people. The key roads, Mr. Speaker, in the 10 regions, Mr. Speaker, includes the following. Ahian Kanta Obwase, 40 kilometers. Ashanti Datano Ahukwa, Suhenso. Ninahini Bauxite Road. That is Awisesu and Ninahini Church Railway. Ashanti Manshia Submetric. 
soit mes sabmetro. Ta fo pankra no sabmetro. Asoka sabmetro. Wada so sabmetro. Okuri kum. Subin sabmetro. Inshiaso bantama mampo ina city. Ate ate bubu kwame danso kujo kum. Sunyani in a rain, Sunyani in a city, Gekum in a city. New Abraham of Fonsi Akemoda, Kesikum Adiembra, PTC Intergen, Takrade, Elubu NG, Kramakum Akontombra, Junasi Swona Anglo, Kabunakwa, Christia in a city. I walk home, I'm a son of Chopo Prasso, a Sikuma, a Koto Chair Road, a Mamama Area Road, a Bura New Community Road, Cape Coast Polytechnic, a Power Sika Road, and other selected Cape Coast inner city roads. Tamale Interchange, North Tamale Interchange. Northern and Upper West Wolongo, <laughs> Pasenkani Wa Road, Laura Han Tumu Road, Upper West Laura Dekei Bridge, Upper West Tutulega San Dema Weasi, Northern Bonkrubu Nagarego Road, Jessica Dodo Fepiasi Infanta. Mr. Speaker, we would also Look at the number of inner city roads in Accra. Taifa, Burkina, Inkatia, Vega, Dome, Tabenya, Mosque, Crystal Asafu area, Pure, Rota and Links, Kwabenya, Farm Milk Area Road, Anya, Edu Jamfi Road, Anya, Selected Roads in Anya, Apostle Safu, Oninasi Road, Pentecost University Road, Omanjo, to a level road, Abiasi Road to Ablekuma, Inland Area Road to Utuom, Racecourse Medical Center, Selected Roads in Bawe, Nanakuom Santo Ashiamai, Adenta Dodoa Road of Franka Hospital Link, Abensu Afiama Taxi Road, Israel's Junction Sound Foundation Blue Gate, and Yabua Street, partial construction of Novo Franco John Tai Bypass. Partial construction of Yellow House and Links, partial construction of Asomfan Road, Trobo Amasamine, Poultry Farm Road, Trobo Amasamine, Drainage Construction, Jamo Road, Lejekuku, all the way to Malik Road, Baptist School Area, Sea Lady Road, Teshi Road, Bypass Road, and Jibadi office complex. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, we hope to implement a financing strategy that will facilitate the payment of a good portion of the validated claims by the Auditor General, thereby getting our contractors back on site to address the tortuous road network that our people have to painfully use. Mr. Speaker, in line with government's agenda to improve public mass transport, the Ministry of Transport has initiated a process for the acquisition of high occupancy buses for the two public bus companies. Government has procured 50 buses for Metro Mass Transit Limited. The first batch of 30 have been delivered and will soon be deployed into service. The additional 20 are expected to be delivered by the end of the third quarter of this year. For the intercity and city coaches, procurement process have been completed for the acquisition. Similarly, 
feasibility studies has been completed and the ministry has initiated steps to acquire 200 compressed natural gas buses and related infrastructure to improve transportation services. Railway sector. One of the major transformational programs of the Akufuado government is to give to the country a modern nationwide railway network system for both passengers and cargo. Through competitive bidding, the Ministry of Railway Development has reached the final stage of procuring a strategic investor for the development of the Eastern Rail Line from Accra, Tema to Kumasi on a BOT basis of Ghanaian participation. Out of the 14 consortiums shortlisted, the preferred bidder will be chosen this year for work to begin. The Accra to Ouagadougou Rail Network, another BOT project, has 11 entities shortlisted for the procurement Honorable process. Honorable members, it appears the background noise is preventing us from hearing very clearly. This line will serve the eastern part of Ghana and will go through Ho, Hohoi, Yendi, Tamale, Bolgatanga, and Paga. Government, Mr. Speaker, will also continue with efforts to source concessionary facilities for the construction of the Kumasi to Tamale section of the Kumasi to Paga rail line and other export credit facilities for Accra to Cape Coast and Accra to Insawam. Our approach is one of building an integrated infrastructure network to facilitate industrialization, trade, and urbanization across the country. Mr. Speaker, following the renegotiation of the terms of the Millennium Challenge Compact II between the Republic of Ghana and the United States of America, a successful beta has been selected through a competitive procurement process. The, re the negotiated transaction agreements, namely the lease assignment agreement, the bulk supply agreement, and the government support agreement to secure the proposed private sector participation in ECG have been approved by cabinet and are currently in parliament for ratification. Thank you. For ratification, the project for the supply installation of facility-based solar micro-grade electrification project in 26 health facilities in Brown Half for northern and western regions, for which contracts have been awarded as of the beginning of the year, has been completed. Mr. Speaker, Recent developments in the economy calls for an enhanced social compact between the government and citizens. It is, it is this need for an enhanced social contract compact that underpins our resolve for pushing the agenda of the president's vision of a Ghana beyond aid. To actualize this, among others, government intends to push for a social partnership between labor and, and faith-based organizations and government. One of the key elements of the social partnership between government and these groups will be the provision of large-scale residential housing across the country. The government has started conversations with the Judiciary and the Trade Union Conference Congress in this regard. Mr. Speaker, in line of this social partnership, and the National Mortgage and Housing Finance Scheme announced in the 2018 Budget and Economic Policy for August, for this August House, the government has designed a scheme to provide cheaper local currency mortgages and residential housing finance to promote social equity. Mr. Speaker, we have observed that to effectively support housing delivery we must address both the demand and supply side of the housing market and develop a scheme that creates an effective ecosystem for home buyers, developers, and financial institutions. On the demand side, government is working with selected banks to provide local currency mortgages at 10% per annum compared to the current market rates of over 25%.
workers will be encouraged to use their tier two pension contributions as equity in the event of income earners who can still not afford a mortgage at a competitive rate. A rent to own initiative in partnership with REITs will be used to support longer term home ownership among others. On the supply side, government will work with banks and local real estate developers under the scheme to provide access to construction finance of about 15% compared to the current rate of over 25%. The scheme will encourage the construction of large integrated communities so that developers can benefit from economies of scale to further lower construction costs. Mr. Speaker, the objective to develop a comprehensive and sustainable housing development scheme in our country, it's important for the welfare of our people. In this regard, we will initiate this program um, in the third quarter and ensure that um, developers would have off-takers from the various organized labor organizations that we are working with. Mr. Speaker, medium-term revenue. The ministry is putting together a medium-term revenue policy that would outline revenue reforms targeted at ensuring that there's adequate revenue to fund government programs. The policy is expected to inform revenue measures for the 2019 budget and beyond. Mr. Speaker, the proposed measures would feed seamlessly into the policy and strategy. The first draft will be ready for discussions soon. Mr. Speaker, government, in conclusion, is making significant strides in establishing a strong and prudent macroeconomic and development agenda on a solid foundation. We are confident, Mr. Speaker, we are confident, Mr. Speaker, that we are now well established on a sustainable growth path. The initiatives we have undertaken are bringing greater clarity of our priorities with emphasis on spending on growth spend enhancing opportunities such as road and railroad development and the IPF. Our vision is in line with our sustainable development goals to ensure that every citizen obtains their fair share of the national pie. Mr. Speaker, we are committed to providing the citizens of this country with true leadership. We are focused on partnering with the private sector and indeed with every well-meaning Ghanaian to revamp the economy in order to achieve sustainable growth and transformation. Mr. Speaker, my firm assurance to you and the entire nation is that the Akufuado government has not wavered in the commitment we made to Ghanaians. We have spent the first 18 months in government fulfilling the major promises we made to invest in our people. The promise of free SHS we have fulfilled. The promise of restoration of teacher and nurses training allowance we have restored. The promise to keep the lights on and not to return to doing so we have fulfilled. The promise, the promise, the promise to ease the burdens of parents through the expansion of major social programs like school feeding and leave, we have fulfilled. The promise of 1D1F we have begun. The promise of one constituency, the promise of one constituency using one million dollars, we are fulfilling. And most importantly, the promise of economic stability the promise of economic stability to restore hope, to reduce taxes, to increase dignity and confidence of all Ghanaians, we are fulfilling. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, in the past month, I have spent a considerable of time holding discussions with some stakeholders in our country. Indeed, 
I choose to refer to them as our development partners because I believe that is what they are. They include all the labor unions, business executives, traders, entrepreneurs, civil society organizations, think tanks, faith-based organizations, academia, traditional leaders, business leaders, both Ghanaian and foreign. We have begun, Mr. Speaker, a new conversation about how we can collaborate as a nation to develop this country. I have initiated these meetings to start a national dialogue, Mr. Speaker, on a new social partnership that places participatory development of our country as our collective goal. This is in line with the President's vision for a Ghana beyond aid. A social partnership, Mr. Speaker, that establishes what we call a wiser society. A wealthy and inclusive, a sustainable and empowered and a respected people. A wiser Ghana. At the end of this year, 2018, this new social partnership, then Mr. Speaker, replaces the IMF as our trusted partners. We, Mr. Speaker, as difficult as it must be to take in, the way forward lies in all of us, Mr. Speaker, every single and adult Ghanaian putting our shoulders to the wheel and pushing forward as one. Our businesses must live up to their tax obligations, as many, but not all, do. Our revenue authority must grow greater discipline about the granting of exemptions and the plugging of loopholes that plague the system. The Akufuado government will continue to intensify its efforts to stem the corruption that bleeds the country of its hard-won revenue. In that same vein, Mr. Speaker, Government is making a social compact with Ghanaians that every single Ghana city, every single Ghana peso that it takes will be spent with only one objective in mind, the advancement of Ghana's great future. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, in 2018 budget, we signal government's commitment to successfully conclude the, the exiting that's the exiting of the IMF ECF program at the end of 2018. Mr. Speaker, I am glad to inform you that we are on course to completing the program successfully. Ghana, as a fund member country, will continue to enjoy the fund's technical assistance. We have successfully, Mr. Speaker, concluded six reviews so far, leaving us with two more reviews to go. A combined fifth and six reviews were successfully concluded in April 2018. Mr. Speaker, we are also putting in place arrangements to ensure irreversibility in macroeconomic gains in the post-IMF era. We are, as I mentioned, in discussions for a social partnership which will see all of us paddling in one direction. And all relevant stakeholders will be part of this arrangement to form a consensus on matters of national development. Mr. Speaker, through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Mr. Speaker, that is where we are. The key to our development does not simply reside in our vast natural resources. Our greatness, Mr. Speaker, lies in the wisdom we can harness as a people to turn our natural resources into huge industrial boom for our nation. That is the focus of this administration. As a government, we are committed, Mr. Speaker, to building this Ghana project with wisdom. The wisdom of our founding fathers, as well as the wisdom gained from our own experiences. We will learn from the wisdom of the nation that have gone ahead of us, as well as the wisdom of our own citizens, home and abroad. Above all, Mr. Speaker, we will learn from the wisdom of God. Mr. Speaker, the tax measures are clear. There will be no increase in VAT. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
order. Order. Minister for Finance will formally move to the adoption of the motion number six. If you move, you can move from there. For the adoption of the mo motion number six, yes. The Honorable Minister will move for the adoption of the motion number six. To conclude, Mr. Speaker, I so move. Thank you. Any seconder of the motion? Honorable Mr. Seat. Who seconds the motion? Mr. Speaker, uh, I beg to second the motion. Thank you. Honorable members, in accordance with the usual practice, Debate on the motions has stand adjourned till Monday, 23rd July 2018, or to such other time that the business committee may determine, subject, of course, to the exigencies of the calendar of the meeting. Any indication, Honorable Majority Leader? For adjournment. Any indication for adjournment of the House? Oh, the, the debate will not run away. It should only come at the appropriate time. The Speaker, Honorable Majority Leader, what, what we have seen today from the Finance Minister is a media review of the performance of the economy. It is not a supplementary budget. It is not. The Speaker, however, a motion has been moved, and we need to deliberate on the motion that has been moved. As Riley said, the Business Committee will program for the debate, and indeed, after the initial discussion that I had with the Minority Leader, it's intended for the debate on it to commence on Monday. The speaker, in the meantime, given what we have heard, I believe we may create for ourselves sufficient space to ponder over the issues. And in that regard, I propose and did move that this House takes an adjournment until tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the forenoon. I so move. Honorable Minority Leader. If you second the motion for, for adjournment. It's a simple one. The yeah, speaker, it's true the leader have consulted so that matters relating to this media review, as you have appropriately referred it to the committee of parliament, and also, Mr. Speaker, appropriately 
reminding the Minister of Finance to have moved the motion. Because we're going to remind him to do that. That is why I was on my feet. We formally couldn't do that. But Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, sec, uh, 270 million only today borrowing, yes, including Canale Airport. Mr. Speaker, the debate, the debate, it will be near 113. 270 million dollars. Mr. Speaker, the minister quoted section 28 of the Public Financial Management Act. The law, the law, the law requires him, section 28, section 28C, an analysis of the total revenue expenditure and financing performance for a period of the first month, first six months, not January to May, first six months, respect the law. I beg we shall come to the motion. business. Those sellers and retailers will know the state of VAT, whether 12% or 12.5%. Take note. And that is the Speaker of Parliament ending the budget review, the 2018 uh, budget review there. Uh, it has been a fascinating presentation, and this is what you call in Ga a sitiwa when we were all expecting uh, the VAT to go up, the finance minister has announced today that the, fin the VAT will not be touched. Kendall Furiata uh, just finishing in Parliament, and he's just joining us. This is Joy, 99.7 FM. We are also live on the Joy News channel on Multi-TV.